Okay, so welcome to a podcast with myself, AJ Morris, and my co-presenter, Anthony mm-hmm. Cedric. So, Thanks. before we start, guys, we're just going to today sort of cover um, the very basics of what got us into natural bodybuilding um, and how we progressed through our sort of rookie years in the gym to both being able to become somewhat successful in the sport. Um, so I'm just going to introduce myself and then I'll let Ant. Um, so I'm AJ and I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm the sort of owner of Made by Morris, which is an online coaching company. Um, and that's what I sort of do for a living at the moment. Um, and I'm also a week out so one week away from the BNBF finals in Liverpool. So handing over to Ant. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm Anthony Sidrick. Um, quite a bit older. I'm 31. Um, natural bodybuilder, lifetime drug-free athlete, and yeah, I'm prepping for the same show. Um, so same different situation. Uh, yeah, different category, but um, I'm prepping for this. Yeah, the same um, BNBF finals, and yeah, very excited and. Yeah, looking forward to yeah getting there, stepping on stage. Cool. So we are both very much in the deepest, darkest parts of our contest prep. So bear yeah. with our lack of enthusiasm. So to speak. yeah, we'll try not to drift we'll off. We'll try not to drown <laughs> it out too much. Yeah. So what we wanted to sort of start with is, I guess, the very basics of what got us into this, because. You know, no lie, the, 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 the real thing behind competing in natural bodybuilding with forgetting the nutrition is really just lifting weights. Um, so I'm going to start by sort of asking you, Ant, um, what, what sort of got you into the gym? What, how old were you and, and, and how, how, how did it all happen? Well, for me, it's funny. I mean, I was uh, 17. Yeah, I was... I was um... Yeah, just turned 17 when I first first started weight training. And the reasons for me were just like, I guess, any other um, teenager to kind of try and get big, uh, get attention from from the ladies, obviously. And yeah, just to kind of look better and get, get that six pack. But um, I found myself like pretty much straight away um, just falling in love with lifting weights and kind of pushing myself to the next level, really. And I mean, straight from the very start, I was kind of researching... Um, yeah, just nutrition, the best way to eat and to gain muscle effectively, um, yeah, whilst keeping body fat off. And yeah, for me, whilst I went in for one reason, um, it turned out that I kind of fell in love, yeah, for, for a different reason. But and yeah, 14 years later, and uh, yeah, I'm still still loving lifting weights. <laughs> yeah. So, so for you, you must have been, because you started so young, I didn't realize you started so young, you must have been. Mm lifting and just were you did you get straight into sort of tracking your nutrition or did you have much knowledge as to um you know getting into a surplus or a deficit or how, how long do you think you spent training you know without this knowledge or um well it wasn't long i mean i kind of got i got some basic knowledge pretty quickly so when i first started i was um um about five foot nine fairly kind of broad frame but I was like 64 kilos yeah. uh, when I first started and my aim was just to get get big pretty much um, and I found it quite soon that I needed to be in a you know a caloric surplus I needed to yeah. be eating a lot of food and lifting heavy and back then it was like stick to that rep range of like 6 to 12 and for me that worked quite effectively at the time um, there was a bit of fat gain uh, I say a bit there was quite a lot of fat gain at the beginning um, expected um but yeah i say from the beginning i got quite a lot of the basics right in terms of uh progressive overload okay. and nutrition um start, yeah. yeah so good start but i just i kind of took things to the extreme too much certainly with the diet side of things okay. um were you and a, were you a bride out of interest did you have your tupperwares and well it's funny i was i was never a, a kind of tupperware guy yeah. but i was always a kind of bro in the belief that you know, I had to eat every three hours, yeah. and um, yeah, there had to be a, a hell of a lot of, of protein shakes. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of us, even both of us, 
to, to sort of point it out, both of us follow um, flexible dieting, so we both yeah. um, use If It Fits For Macros as our sort of main principle for our prep. Um, but I think, you know, most of us have a little bit of bro left in us somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, before our fasted cardio, we'll have, like, PCAAs or something. Yeah. Because we don't want to lose our gains. So, that's yeah, it, man. It's, it's, that's it's things like that that sort of stick stick with you, I think, when you first get into lifting. Um, something that, you know, I started um, when I was sort of 16. I had... Mm -hmm. I had a background in um, motorsport, so I was racing karts at a pretty high level. I sort of got to a uh, world final level in karting and um, competed pretty highly in a national level as well. Um, and that was sort of my big goal, was to make it in motorsport. Um, so I, I was sort of really introduced to fitness as a way and a means to make me better in the in the driving seat so to make me better on the track basically um and that was that was how i first got introduced to the gym obviously before that i was um i was very much just doing outside stuff with cardio that was the bulk of the training for for, for what i was sort of prescribed um, was was a lot of cardio and a lot of a lot of running, um, but what I sort of transferred to was I think I remember looking in like Argos catalogs <laughs> and mm -hmm. looking at the multi gyms and what yeah, I did the same. wanted a multi gym in my house. Um, mm -hmm. So when my mom sort of said, oh, well you know you can I think the leisure centre that was close to me had like a junior membership so. You could go at a certain time and you had yeah. to be monitored on the weights type thing but you know i think i was one of the 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 teenagers that would sneak onto the weights and <laughs> at, at yeah. the times that you weren't allowed type thing so that was so the motorsport really got me in the gym and then i was sort of i still competed in motorsport until i think i was late 17 if not 18 so in reality i think the last year i competed in motorsport was i think halfway to through 2013 was when i stopped so in reality not that long ago did i, did uh, I stop competing at a high level in that which was you know something that um you now obviously is is a big change and but um my sort of perspective with my fitness and motorsport was if I can get fitter then I can I can try and beat these people that have maybe got more money than me because in motorsport the the, the big deal is sort of who's got the most money which is unfortunate oh, yeah. but it plays a big part and I was really thinking as to how I could make myself better um, and how I could stand a chance against the sort of the people with the more money so I became sort of very that instilled a pretty high level of you know sort of a high level a high work ethic um, within mm. me, which um, I sort of kept um, till now really, which is just trying to sort of better myself in every way possible to to, to make make me a good competitor in, in whatever I'm doing. Um, yeah. So yeah, the motorsport got me into that, and then when I was sort of when I sort of left the motorsport, I decided that I wanted to take my training in the gym pretty seriously. At that point, I had no sort of real knowledge about nutrition, but what I was doing is I was very much following the wrong information. So I was following the bodybuilding.com, the wrong area of bodybuilding.com not because actually yeah. some of the forums on bodybuilding.com are actually really informative um, especially if you look for the right people um, like uh, old Lane Norton contest, contest blogs um, or uh, I think Nunes and other natural pros have, have done uh, blogs mm. on there which which are really 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 dense in, in the but you got to uh, search yeah, for it that's yeah, the thing you really have to search for it and you've not oh, got yeah. to look at the you know the home page um, so nice. um, 
I was looking at that, I was looking at sort of Flex magazine and things like that, which really sort of sent me in the wrong direction with regards to nutrition. I was like you, I was sort of having to eat every couple of hours out of yeah. Tupperware, clean foods only, because those are the only ones that oh, work. Yeah. Um, I probably was in a very, very harsh surplus, if I'm honest. Yeah, um, because yeah. I gained weight pretty fast mm. from the minute I decided to mm. uh, compete, uh, not compete, sorry, but to take my training seriously, I gained weight pretty fast. And I think I went up yeah. from about a hundred and sort of fifty ish pounds to about yeah. 185, 188, um, yeah, That's in the space of maybe six months, something like that, and at that, uh, that point yeah. I really thought that I was just going, I had to go through this phase, it was like a bulk, like, it was a yeah. bulk that was never going to end, and <clears throat> at the end of the day, I was getting strong, and I was, I was, enjo mm. I was enjoying life for most of it, yeah, and easy. <laughs> I was enjoying the fact that obviously I, I didn't have to track my nutrition, I just I just cooked whatever I want sort of in terms of my chicken and stuff, but it did get to the point where I was like, okay, I'm actually, I, my, my sort of self-image was not, uh, not, not so admirable. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so I was, I was really, I think, you know, anyone that saw me training in the past, I was very, very covered up. I'd always train in hoodies. Yeah. Um, and I'd always, yeah, stay covered up because I wasn't, I got to the point where I was really not that satisfied with, with what I'd created. And I was like, well, you know, if, if I've put all this effort in with my training, I've, I've come every day. You know, I've not taken mm. I've no rest days, and um, you know, I've gone through these brutal high rep leg workouts, and you know, I, I, yeah. I got a fair amount of progression out of that. But it was just, it was just not the right not way to do things. You know, one one body mm. part split. You know, arms on one day, chest on another type thing, which is fine. Yeah. And if you enjoy training like that, then I'd. I'd I wouldn't say change it, but um, for me it was really not the right way to be training straight out the bat. I would have been much better on an upper no, lower split. Um, yeah. Yeah. So moving away from moving away from that, I just sort of. So I was very bulked up by this time, very heavy, um, and I decided that. Um, I was at the stage where I, I needed to make a decision as to, I'd only been a year away from competing and I was always already getting the urge to, to have this competitive you know, talent brought out again. Um, so I contacted a, a friend of mine um, who worked with physique athletes um, and you know I'd highly recommend them, their services um, and you know they do private personal training and uh, online coaching. Uh, it's a company called the Performance Project, um, and I've been sort of lucky enough to be be sort of um, you know learning from those guys recently. Um, so, but yeah, he was he was able to. Um, I sorry, I approached him sort of to say I, I'd like to compete. Um, and you know it's sort so we'll leave it there um, because I'll let you catch up mm. and I'll let you um, sort yeah, of cool. explain how your I'd like sort of to know more about how your nutrition has changed from when you first started yes. um, because you've had a big gap from just starting lifting to to yep. you know what what's happened? What's happened in, ge in general, both in lifting and your sort of your your career? How how did you become a personal trainer? You no, know, what's happened in between this gap? Okay, so um, yeah, basically, I, I knew from quite a young age, well, about seventeen, eighteen, that I wanted to um, to get into personal training just because I enjoyed it so much, and. Um, after getting a few more years training under my belt, and once I was like financially able to, um, 
I became qualified as a trainer at 23. Um, and it was actually then that I thought about competing for the first time. Um, a friend of mine, a fellow PT, had just entered a show, and that was funny. Was I thought it was in the BNBF. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember his name, Aaron, but uh, yeah, that was back in 2008. And I thought, oh, that sounds really interesting. He didn't. He didn't place. Um, he had a decent physique, but what put me off, actually, funny enough, was how was his approach to dieting. Um, his coach had him on literally chicken and broccoli for um, for, uh, for a matter of months, and I could, yeah, it was pet, and I could literally see him disappearing. And he got very lean. Um, it's such a half, half yeah, deficit, yeah. but just all protein. I know, but it, it was yeah, all protein, and he. He was a state that I mean he, um, I mean after the show he rebounded like big time understandably, but before that um, he used to say things like oh I just I broke at the weekend and I had a I, an apple and a protein bar I just couldn't couldn't take it anymore and that kind of thought um, back then yeah I was twenty how old was I yeah twenty three I thought if this is what natural bodybuilding is like then I don't really want to be a part of it um, it wasn't until because you know, at the time I was, I'd maintain like a decent physique, um, by no means like you, were you know show ready, but sort of, yeah, okay. yeah, I was in decent you shape. To um, trainer, to be honest, you have to stay sort of relatively in shape to get that image. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, although not all no, not, not PTs all are, PTs but yeah, <laughs> it's certainly uh, helps. I know, yeah. Um, but back to the sort of. Um, mm competing yeah that kind of put me off and it wasn't until probably four or five years late that I kind of got into flexible dieting and tracking my macros so I was kind of late 20s before that happened um but yeah in terms of uh from the beginning to now um I've had the kind of same ups and downs with physique um and like I said before I'd always kind of do things to the extreme so when I first went on a cut, for example, um, after gaining a bit of muscle and a bit of fat, I did things, you know, I did things to the extreme again, and I was just far, far too, too limited. Not only with, with my food choices, but, um, well, just my overall calories were just you, were too low. So I ended up dropping. Really quickly, or did you just progressively drop them too low? Because I see a lot of people. What they do is, they 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 have this off-season gaining phase and then they suddenly, mm. um, you know, they'll start hashtagging cutting and diet on Instagram yeah. and their calories will drop yeah. from their maintenance, which is maybe just over 3,000 to 1,500 a day. And they'll like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was doing exactly the same. Um, I was doing my early morning cardio although for me back then it was it was running um and yeah hitting the weights like four times a week with the typical kind of bro bro split and um but i just did it far too quickly that i had i had no idea about reverse dieting or just yeah mm. gradually reducing your calories i just went straight from like you say probably like three three bit thousand calories to no joke it's probably like a thousand oh. it wasn't much more than that um and after like three months, I ended up weighing less than what I did when I first started training. Um, and admittedly, I looked better because I had gained. And you'll have some tissue yeah, left. Retained... That's it. Um, so I kind of retained some of the muscle that I'd gained, but I definitely lost it. And I'd also, um, yeah, I'd just gone about it the whole, the wrong way. And then after that, I kind of went into a bulk, um, but took things to the extreme. I was consuming. Yeah, four to five thousand calories a day easily, and I went all the way to ninety kilos. That's heavy um, for you, yeah. And yeah, that's pretty heavy because I mean, yeah, my stage weight for my first show was seventy, seventy one point four. So, um, and with a lot more muscle than I had at ninety. So, like thirty kilos of stage weight. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and I was like twenty two years old, and I kind of knew then that this isn't right. I was kind of going through the a cycle of bulking and cutting, bulking and cutting, and kind of like you said before, never really being satisfied yeah. you know, with physique. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, we all make these mistakes, don't we, when it comes to yeah, early, early training. Yeah, I think that like, a lot of people just don't know is, is 
especially when you don't have this sort of hyper focus goal like we do at the moment like we have a time yeah. scale or we well i'd like yeah. to say that i didn't diet with a time scale because it's it, it is a better way of dieting like i think if anyone approached me yeah. for, for a contest prep I, I, i'd like to say that I'd, I'd take them with enough time i'd take them on board with enough time to sort of look at a season of shows and say okay let's start you dieting now and then these mm. four or five shows we could hit type thing so i think yeah i mean yeah. referring back to the the hyper focus goal is you know we we have this day or this time that we want to compete um and we have a, a relatively good idea of the body weight that we're going to be on stage um, and we have a good idea yeah, of definitely. how how far away we are and how long we've got to, you know, if we're 10 weeks out and we've got 15 pounds to lose, we know it's going to be a little bit of an uphill struggle, but it's possible. Whereas if yeah. we had 30 That's pounds it. to lose, we'd know that we probably had to change our show date. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. It's not you know, but, yeah. yeah, with people that I think I'd be a bit lost if I didn't have some form of goal um or or, or if i didn't if mm. i hadn't have competed or at least gotten very lean i think i'd struggle to know yeah. what my body weight should be and where i should you know where i should just relax and chill or you know whether i should look to add calories or you know these are things that mm. i think people should really look to develop their knowledge with almost almost as soon as they start enjoying their weight training to an extent yeah to an extent where they they'd yeah. like to start taking things seriously so i think when you know when you're progressing on your lifts um and you're really mm. getting in there a good four to five times a week i'm not talking like you're going once a week and then you might go four times a week the next week and then you know take a week off and mm -hmm. you're very spotty with your training i yeah. don't i don't think that's the right time to start taking your nutrition seriously um because the fact of the matter is no, you, no. you just you just won't will you so i think so i think yeah, yeah that's something that's you know rookies rookies don't don't really know too much about what they should do um you know with their body weight and and whether they should be searching to gain more or, or mm -hmm. gain less but um it is it that is, is a difficult um, decision isn't it that's yeah. where a coach comes in i mean that's where it's it's nice to at least for one you know cutting or or, or gaining phase it's nice to have someone tell you okay yeah i think i think you should mm. maybe you know drop down a little bit before you start gaining again so we're talking about like the the infamous uh, mini cut which you see far too many people yeah. doing like you you don't need to do especially if you're having extended periods of gaining you don't need to be keep you know keep going into a deficit unless you've got you know unless you've got things yeah. that require you to be lean like for example being a pt you know if if you do get a little bit mm, too yeah. on the chunky side and you want to bring things down a bit that's where having that knowledge of yeah having that knowledge like of work. okay well if i reduce calories by a little bit i drop a, you know, a good five pounds over the next five weeks then i'll be more comfortable to go back into a into a gaining phase that's it but well, the problem with the mini cuts is just, yeah, yeah they hinder exactly. overall yeah, progress a bit too much. Surplus, right. As long as you can, just to keep gaining strength. So I think that's yeah. one tip that we've come to a conclusion with. Um, you know, we both yeah. would recommend that you just, um, you know, get in a nice surplus, and but don't just don't go to the extremes yeah. of our our two our two bulks Definitely. and our two. Um, well, I I didn't actually diet at all before I dieted for my first show. My first my first time getting lean was my first contest prep. Um, so yeah, that's sort of interesting. Yeah, well, right. really. Um, but um, yeah. So I think yeah. before we babble on too much about mini cups and stuff that people might not relate to too much, 
let's start with um so we've both sort of come to the point now where we've described how things have gone up until mm. we decided to compete um so with myself <clears throat> i'll sort of go into more detail as to how i got into and how i was aware of natural bodybuilding as a sport um because when i i think when i first started lifting i think i thought the only sort of I thought bodybuilding was Jay Cutler, and I thought bodybuilding was Kai Green. Um, so yeah, that's what I thought bodybuilding yeah, was. Flex magazine. Thought. To compete, I had to look like them, and I had to train like them, and eat like them, which is more, you know, more yeah. why I was definitely heading down the bumpy wrong track, <laughs> so to speak. So um, right, right, I, yeah. yeah. Realized, I think I realized that there was a, a drug free way to do it um, on YouTube. I think uh, a lot of the things that I've learned have been from YouTube, okay. and I'm sure that's sort of the same for, for you. Um, so, yeah, I yeah, I learned YouTube is awesome. Of natural bodybuilding on YouTube. I think I remember watching um, a lad called uh, Kieran Billen, that was his name, um, and I remember watching his uh, video of him competing at the BMBF, um, at one of the BMBF shows, it might even have been the Teen BMBF Midlands, because I, I, yeah, I believe he, he won it, I Which believe he won the show, um, and there was another lad that was posting right. videos on YouTube called... I can remember his name now because it rings. It, you know, it was it was my first experience of it, and I was just hooked. Um, his name was, and he still plays videos, I think, and it's mm. called Jed Hassel. Um, and both of their right. both of their videos made me realise that there was there was a team category, and there was also the chance to compete against athletes that were going to be drug tested, um, because I noticed that there was a vast difference mm. between people in the it just in my general gym that trained with no assist no assistance and and assistance so i realized that yeah and i realized that the guys on 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 the drugs were going to look different and train differently to the guys that, that didn't yeah. use the drugs um so having seen these videos i thought i was sort of compared obviously pictures and stuff as you do and like, well, I just thought, at mm. the time, I thought I was pretty damn big. Like, I thought I was, yeah, and this was when I was really, really hefty. This when you were, and it, you and it, took, it yeah. took a few times and a few yeah. people to tell me that, um, you know, I did, I did have some muscle, but I was, I was needing to definitely start coming down. Mm. Um, so the coach that I sort of got into contact with, yeah. Um, it wasn't sort of a contest prep coach to speak or anything like that, and neither am, neither am I. It's just I work with clients that want to get lean, and if they want to get lean and compete, then you know, maybe I'll help them type thing. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a contest prep coach. It was just a guy that you know is knowledgeable, and he applied flexible dieting, and he was also my well, he, he's also my friend. He still is my friend. Um, so um, that's why I contacted him. And I sort of said, you know, can you get me ready for a show? Um, I think there was some some level of uh, um, doubt <laughs> when I started. I'm sure if he listens to this, then he'll right, right. you know, probably yeah. agree because my starting point wasn't wasn't fantastic, <laughs> but it was um, it was quick to see that. Right, right. And you can tell, like, even with working with some of the guys that I work with now, you can tell if someone's going to be doing fairly okay, they will they will just stick to the plan and they will just, like, during the week they'll just get on with it and, mm. you know, whenever they check in, they'll check yeah. in and say, you know, blah, blah, I hit all my macros, I did all my training, I did all my cardio. And that, uh, apart from the blase of questions that I always asked him yeah. um, about, you know, whether I should track my toothpaste or <laughs> something like that um yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. same it, thing recently um but apart from that i just literally i just literally got on with it 
Um, yeah. And you know, it came, it came to the point, you know, maybe halfway through the mm. prep that we realised that, you know, I had had some fairly decent leg development. My upper body needed work, but I had some okay legs, and um, you know, they were going to see me through. Hopefully, maybe, maybe placing. Mm. But the goal was never really, you know, I was never really having this massive goal of, okay, I have to win type thing, or um, I didn't really have a clue what contest conditioning looked like, but I thought I was pretty lean. Yeah. Um, you know, looking back on it, um, I wasn't that lean, but I was, I was okay, and I looked, and I looked, you know, I looked my place on stage, and I did yeah. well, and I came, um, you know, I ended up, you know, obviously following flexible, flexible dieting. Um, although I have to admit I was pretty, I was still pretty bro. Um, I think more to, more because I was in a job which required right. meal prep like all the time, so I had to I had to prep meals, which made me produce sort of. Yeah, especially yeah. as I got more tired at the end of prep, I was just trying to blag things and. So I'd cook up just my rice for my carb sauce um, and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, towards the mm. end of prep, I got more flexible. And definitely, when I when I sort of came out of the prep, I I, I did get, I did get a bit more flexible in my intake. But I was still I was still still very bro, still very bro. Um, Still yeah, it, yeah, I still love the oats. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think I'll ever. And you still got those oats too. Um, but um, I just, yeah, That's I just couldn't get away from the fact that I thought it was going to yeah, improve my physique, and you know, and I thought that it was the right way to do things. But you know, you've, you, mm. I think relaxing about my nutrition was the way that I really sort of discovered flexible dieting as a concept and just relaxing into it. No, you've no, you've. Re- you, I think gaining yeah. knowledge is the best. It's easier it. first. If you gain knowledge and you gain knowledge off people that are applying it, um, for example, I just listen endlessly to podcasts, especially from the mm. likes of Team Three DMJ, um, uh, you know, the Strength Athlete, um, stuff like that. I've listened to a Same. lot of um, Jeff Nippard stuff. Um, and Lane Norton, obviously, and people like that that really preach the evidence-based approach, which, you know, now I just could I couldn't yep. consider it doing any other any other way. Anyway, mm. no, I mean I can I don't I don't think I could be happy at this. At this uh, there is no other way. Of <laughs> and, and having to eat you know. really boring meals as well. I think on top of everything, that would just kill me over. Um, but yeah, leading on to sort of how I got on. Um, so my first show yes. was the BMBF Midlands in 2014, um, and I came third uh, in the team category. I think there was five guys, and I came third. Um, and then I did the British, which I was very, very glad that I did, um, because it was an absolutely awesome event, and you really do feel like a a true athlete. You do feel like you're competing. It was actually the same weekend as the Olympia last year. Um, so I felt like I was, good, and I will do this you know, next weekend as well. You feel like you're competing in oh, a cool. mini Olympia. You get you get treated like an uh, an absolute ath- like an a- actual athlete. Yeah. Um, and I you know I can't fault the BNBF for 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 you know getting such mm. a great venue for for the best natural athletes in in Britain. Um, and so I couldn't fault my first show. I thought. I thought it was great, and hence why I made it my goal to come back and win that show the next year. Um, you know, which which I was able to able to you know come back and win that Midlands title, mm. and obviously now I'm going to the BBF finals as um as a class winner rather than um you know, coming third. So I hope you know I hope that you know I'll, I'll be able to do yes. myself proud at the finals as well. So um. But, but yeah, thank thank you very much, Anne. <laughs> um, but that's yeah, nice so achievement. that's me pretty much up to date. That's me pretty much up to now. Um, so I'll let you and sort of catch up again and mm. tell people how you got into 
competing when did you decide to compete yeah um and uh how did you start your your contest prep diet or how did it begin yeah so basically um i've been training for, for quite a few years and it wasn't until kind of the same as you i discovered you know the likes of lane norton eric helms um, Lyle McDonald and I, I was it was actually flexible dieting that really kind of helped me um, take things to the next level in terms of my physique yeah I just thought to myself how can these people be eating all this you know in my eyes dirty food and get so lean um, and I was intrigued I was intrigued by it um, so I kind of tried it myself found it to be very effective and um, I got into my training a lot more yeah. and I kind of messed around with intermittent fasting a yeah. bit at the time too um, which I found quite effective for fat loss um, but I think that's yeah, that's for another video <laughs> um, this was back in 2013 and I set myself like a mini goal then yeah. of just getting as lean as I could for the summer um, not really to do a show but just get as lean as I could and I got fairly lean um, and I enjoyed the process and I was doing it the correct way through flexible dieting although once again I was a bit too severe with my with my deficit um, but you live and learn and then it was around 2013 um, I learned more about reverse dieting and I thought you know right I want to I want to do a competition for the first time do a natural bodybuilding show um, so the plan was to compete in 2014 um, in the BNBF Southern for that year actually so I um, I contacted them, got some information, um, but then oh, wow. me and my then girlfriend or fiance rather decided that we were going to get married um, in that year, and it oh, yeah, yeah, so um, it would have actually nice. been our wedding day was the week before the BMBF Southern of 2014, so it was ideal timing. So I thought um, I'm going to just build as much muscle as I can and yeah, aim to compete in 2015. So, you have um, this goal for so I did that. I got from a fairly party. lean body weight to a not so lean, but still you know, looking fairly decent. Sort of um, it like, it's really ideal to have it as a long yeah, yeah. goal. Um, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I did. It was like the end of 2013. Um, is when I thought when I decided 2015 was going to be the year. And it was very long term, um, but I was really enjoying my training, um, progressing on my squats, deadlifts, bench press, all the big lifts, and yeah, gaining muscle slowly, gaining weight slowly, um, still tracking everything I ate, um, you know, tracking all my lifts, and yeah, it was going nice and smoothly. Um, and then it was January 2015 where I probably started my my contest prep, and it was it was kind of easy at first. I just took things and then less. I when mean, I first started dieting on like two thousand seven to two thousand eight hundred calories a day. Um with like eighty grams of fat, which is lovely. <laughs> and yeah, things were dropping nicely and um my aim was obviously to compete in the southern. I'd got my got my place booked, I joined the BMBF and Did you only help with posing Yeah, gradually um brought the weight down and obviously started to learn more about posing. Okay. Um uh, well, it's funny because I got um, I became sponsored by Ambition Athletics, who um, um, the guy Michael Ferguson, really good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're basically a company that uh, represents natural um, and yeah, drug-free athletes in bodybuilding and, and powerlifting, and they support a uh, sponsor a handful of athletes. Um, so yeah, he gave me some you know, really cool posing tips. Um, so along alongside that, and just doing some research on my own, um, I feel like I'm pretty by posing a lot. If you look back at some of my early YouTube videos, um, my posing was was really bad, um, <laughs> so far for sure. And um, I think coupled with the fact that I, I was yeah. at my heaviest um, with the subpar posing, it wasn't a wasn't a good look. But uh, I had to put it up on YouTube just to show the progression. Um, but anyway, back to the prep. Uh, yeah, things started to go. Not, but, you know, things continue to, to go in the right direction um, so if I'd hit like a little plateau I'd, I'd monitor it, I'd keep my calories the same for a few weeks 
um, and then you know before dropping them, and yes, yeah, so I went to the got to the Southern and um, which is my first ever show, and yeah, like you said before the BMF, yeah, you know, really smooth, really slickly run, and yeah, yeah met some great people really backstage. Yeah. Um, I entered cool the novice class being my first my first show, and there were I think fourteen or fifteen in my class. <laughs> 15 was it and um yeah really big class and um that's where i met you actually that's where i met aj for the first time and um and yeah it was it was an awesome experience and i just got off stage the first time um met up with sarah and i was i was really self-critical about how i how i did i was like oh, i'm not too sure i just i thought i looked okay i thought i looked good were you just sort of like clueless going into the show type thing or Well, it's funny. I was I was clueless because it was my first ever show. I didn't really know what to what to expect. But um, everyone makes you so welcome. Not only the other competitors, but you know the organisers too. And yeah, it could it say slickly run. You you only don't. I was nervous, but you know at the same time pretty chilled and relaxed. Yeah. But I was just focused on my own physique. I never really looked at any of the other individuals. I knew that I'd brought you know a good enough package to 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 do well. And of course you don't know. I was just kind of focused on myself backstage, really. And it's funny when you're up there, even when there are so many people, um, you don't really get to see anyone else. It's just you get to see like just the bright lights and 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 yeah, the crowd if you can kind of make them out. But um, yeah, really surreal experience. Yeah. We went back to pre-judging in the evening after yeah. doing my individual routine, and yeah, I managed to win. Uh, I managed to win my class, which it was an amazing experience um and then yeah well i like to think so but uh yeah, yeah um awesome. yeah it was it was an awesome experience and then yeah. after that i went on and i managed to win the overall as well which um Definitely. really kind of yeah yeah it's yeah. up the day off really and yeah it will it will That's always be one of my most here, yeah think, cherished yeah. experiences um, um winning my first show and the best wheels trophy too <laughs> How which was which was long nice. Um, been training and how how much time had been invested prior to stepping on stage that 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 result really sort of resonated mm. with that sort of time period of of constant effort and you know ups and downs. Yeah. But, but definitely just training hard and and being consistent for a long long period of time. Um, and I'm sure there's, there's there's the onlooker that will still look at your physique and, and say, Being oh, consistent. That, that's, that's not possible natural. That's not so natural. Yeah. You can't get that shredded naturally type thing. But, um, you know, you've got to look at it as those years of training that have gone into, you know, gone into yeah, creating. Yeah, sure, I'm sure they will. And the, the, the whole couple of years of planning yeah. that you have for that show. Um, I think we both have the, the similar sort of uh, mindset of pre-planning goals because we both pre-planned our shows um yeah it worked. We, yeah we had that we had that sort of goal for a long time um which made sure that throughout even our mm. sort of off season or improvement i think you have to really you like to call it, yeah we were still working hard and 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 you know putting in the, the hours in but both in the gym and, and outside of the gym with, with nutrition um so yeah i think that that pretty much brings us sort of up to date doesn't it and, i mean just to we hit sort of 44 minutes on on the call at the moment but um yeah it has it has gone quick and i've i've sort of really enjoyed this we sort of learned a lot about each other that actually i don't i don't think i knew before um yeah oh, that's gone quick <laughs> no, that's cool no that's cool i mean yeah. um yeah yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that about me. I guess I mean it only. Same. I didn't know you were into motorsport. I'm, I'm a Basque motorsport fan. Facebook to, to sort of hit the point where I was still posting. And karting actually. Um, you know, karting pictures. But yeah, I guess I guess a lot of people consider me just AJ, the guy who lift lift yeah lifts weights and and mm -hmm. sits on stage and in some truck in some trunks. So, um, but yeah, no, I think we've we've sort of hit the point where we can sort of wrap things up and 
I think maybe it's good to sort of finish the call with um, maybe just a few yeah. tips for newbies that are just getting into that sort of... I've had a lot of newbies sort of come to me asking questions about training and diet. So if we give maybe... Um, so one tip for each, one tip for training, one tip for diet, and one tip if you want to get into competing. Um, so these tips are coming to the guys only that have managed to listen to 45 minutes of this call. So unless you've been very cheeky and you skip to right at the end to see yeah. if we do anything more interesting than blabble about ourselves, then, you know, you're the only ones receiving these yeah, top yeah. tips. So, and if you go first, okay. so one training, one nutrition, and one if you want to get into competing. <laughs> you just have to. Okay. Okay. Okay, first of all, um, training, I'd say the the most important thing in my eyes is is consistency uh yeah. being consistent um obviously it's important to to be consistent with the right kind of training but i think you know without without that you're not going to be mm. making the games missing workouts um consistency is so so important so yeah 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 but i think provided you're passionate enough about the about training about natural bodybuilding yeah that shouldn't be an issue um yeah, that's my that's my top tip for training. Mm. And for diet, did you want as well? Okay. For nutrition, uh, it's, it, that's a difficult one. I say, um, obviously, consistency as well with diet. But for me, diet is something that's there to be enjoyed. And I think the most important thing is to just really enjoy your food because diets don't have to be restrictive. Definitely. You know, um, and yeah, you can be creative. So yeah, make food interesting. Yeah. I think whether you're bulking, whether you're dieting, you know, regardless of your calories, yeah. um, you can still make food interesting, in my opinion. Um, so that's my tip. Just otherwise, it's, it's just going to be no fun. Okay, you're enjoying your training. Yeah. You want to have a nice diet to go alongside that. Um, and for competing, I'd say just make sure you're ready. I think if you oh, yeah. think you're stage ready, if you think you're lean enough, no. you've probably got another five kilos to lose. <laughs> I think it's, and I say this to people, it's amazing how, how light the human body is once yeah. you strip away, you know, all or yeah, most of the body fat. I never thought I'd get down to like um, 70 so yeah, odd kilos, 71 kilos. One, so, um, so, and yeah, so just take it slow, so I'd say. So my top training tip. Yeah, take it nice and slow with my your, with your competing. Over to you. Mm. I think. Make sure that it is, it's training that you can fit around mm -hmm. your lifestyle so make sure that your training is both enjoyable the reason i'm not saying enjoyable is because you, you said it's enjoyable for nutrition so i don't want to copy but i think mm. having having a training program that fits your lifestyle so that you you never get stressed out about Oh god, I didn't finish, <laughs> yeah. finish, finish that. Seven That's cool. Bicep curls. Ah, oh, god damn it! Now my now my biceps just won't grow. Um, I think having a training program that really fits your lifestyle and and can be completed consistently, like you say. Yeah. yeah. And but whilst having time <laughs> to get yeah. the important things done. So I mean, like work, uh, family, and friends. All of these should definitely come on top of or before training. So I think, um, I mean, this, you know, looking at how other people program mm. training to fit lifestyles, for example, um, like I, I know that sort of yeah, some good. 3DMJ um, athletes like Nunes, for example, he almost programs his training to just the he, 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 he will write out movements and then he will just complete those movements as he sees fit during the week so if if in one workout he needs to front squat and then um lap pull down and um bicep curl and then go into a 
Yeah. Oh, I don't know, like a stiff leg deadlift. So he's done he's done like upper and lower body in one session, basically. But he's completed his movements and he can tick them off the, the list of movements he's got to complete in his training week. So I think having a training program that fits your lifestyle is my tip for that. Um, yeah. And then nutrition, I think you've sort of definitely stolen my enjoyment one there. Um, mm. <laughs> I think I think developing your knowledge with nutrition. Mm. So if you're trying to get into your lifting more and you're trying to... Um, oh, sorry, man. Change your physique. You should have gone first. Do something, you know, different with your That's yeah with, with your training um i think having that knowledge with regards to nutrition is definitely going to lead you in the right direction so build your knowledge and listen to the right people um if you need to know any more people that you need to sort of look up to then um you know send either me or Alex mm. a message and we can direct you in the right place or we can give you guidance ourselves um well as far as we as far as our knowledge goes um and then getting into competing i think yep. so you said yeah give give yourself enough time and and yep. make sure you're ready i think what you need to know is you yep. need to know mm -hmm. um the bigger picture so you need to know that it's not just about getting lean Contest prep is not just about um, you know dieting and then getting on stage. It's about the mental aspect of prep. Um, there will be days where you do not feel like you can operate on any sort of level. Um, yeah, if 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 this is considering you are lean, like if you if you're like maybe, I think I was feeling good up until about maybe five pounds ago, maybe yeah, five pounds, five or six pounds ago. If you've done things correctly, um, <laughs> so but but that was that was probably yeah, five or yeah. six weeks out of my qualifier, so I haven't ever returned to that happy state yet, which I will which I will will, will try and get back to yeah. as quickly as possible. Um, <laughs> but um, so yeah, just. Just take into yeah. account that it's not just getting lean, and it's also very oh, it's been taxing, um, and make sure that you're very yeah. comfortable Same as a person medicine. prior to the prep. So if you already have a lot of insecurities, or you already have a lot going on in your life, for example, you had a wedding and you made the correct option, um, if you already have like, you know, an unsecured job, mm. and family life's not good, Getting yourself into a contest prep is only going to worsen that. It's going to make it so much yep. worse, both to deal with and probably the end result. So, um, you know, have a good friendship network. Keep the ones that you need close. And, you know, basically, yeah. I mean, if, if someone's being horrible mm -hmm. and making things worse for you, they've, they've got to go. <laughs> they've yeah. got to go immediately because they're going to go anyway. So, you know, get, get rid of them as quickly as you can. Um, so yeah, just just make sure everything's everything's safe and sound before you enter the prep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much wraps everything up, mate. So we have we have Definitely. managed to sort of kill fifty three minutes, and I'm sure we're both gonna go and maybe eat some food now. So mm, um, we to. will sort of stop the recording here. And uh, from from stop myself, it. I hope anyone that has managed to listen to the whole thing i hope you enjoyed it um and we'll, we'll do another one soon hopefully um with with maybe yeah. some topics that that get suggested from other people or i'm sure me and Ant will think of something post show so yeah is there anything you wanted to say Ant, or is all we good sounds good yeah definitely. cool Cool. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Anne. Uh